What happens when parents and caregivers are equally very busy? In this day and era, we do have career parents. You know, they are wanting to climb up the ladder mm -hmm. and uh, not getting everybody else on that very same ladder that they're climbing on. And so it's a, a rock and a hard place for parenting today. But we are joined by those that have walked this journey a little bit so far. And from their experience, they have realized, no, we need to do something different in order to help the different parent of today. And so I introduce to you the founders of Mums Gather. And this is Lisa Kusima and Daisy Sunshine. Good morning to you, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. So pleased to be here. <laughs> 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 My goodness, but <laughs> allow me to give you your salutations to our audience. We'll start with you, Lisa. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. My name is Lisa Kosima. I'm a mom of three, mm. a wife, and a content creator and digital entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and I'm glad to be here. It's a pleasure to have you, Daisy. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I am Daisy Sunshine. I am a mother of three and a wife, a content creator on Instagram and on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, ladies, we want to look at parenting of today, but of course, we want to do comparisons. Yeah. So what you saw <laughs> your parents do for you versus uh, what it is like for you now that you have uh, become your own parent. Let me start with Elisa. Yeah, I think uh, parenting before um, was more communal, like you had aunties come in to support, um, your mom was more present at home, you know, so anything, any situation you're going through, you know, you, you knew that mm -hmm. your mom was always there. Mm -hmm. These days, uh, it's not the case. We have so many career moms and sometimes we are busy and we leave parenting sometimes into the house helps and yeah, and the teachers. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's the difference. And the CCTV comes. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are watching. <laughs> We're not there, but we are watching. <laughs> My yeah. goodness. Yeah. Daisy, what does this picture look like for you in comparison to how you were raised? Um, something that just gets off at the top of my head is growing up you'd find that you have one house help for a very long time yes. but in this day and age the house helps are in and out a house help in, in a month you find you have like four house yeah. helps because they're in and out yeah. and i feel like that has destabilized our parenting mm -hmm. in a way yeah. chasing your career but also running your home mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and now you are mothers yourselves I, I know that, as you had mentioned, like aunties, you'd see this, there's a systematic way of mm -hmm. handling a baby, right? From mm -hmm. when they come out of mommy's womb, yeah. they'd choke it all, what is this? <laughs> Man, yeah, now take it, make them drink these for the choleric, what is yeah. it? Yeah. So what has that journey looked like for you? Have you had that support system around you for your three children? Mm. Ah, well, <laughs> it's not been easy. I got married really young, so mm -hmm. all my friends were not parents. Yeah. So it was a new space for me. So my mom is a career mom, so you know, even when I gave birth, she had to take leave. You have to make sure that the leave really aligns with you know with. the pregnant, uh, the giving birth, etc. So she came home and supported me for maybe about a week, and then after that, she had to go. Mm -hmm. I remember around that time, uh, support I got was from my sister-in-law. You know, I had questions I was scared about certain things what are some of the questions you had ah, oof, on live TV but um, yeah so like <laughs> because we are live moms exactly, exactly. <laughs> so after giving birth my stitches opened okay. you know and it was scary my mom had also never heard of stitches opening yeah. and I was scared I was confused I was wondering will that area ever go back yeah <laughs> you know and i called my sister and she's like it's okay it happens and she walked me through she came and saw me and she really helped me like i was you know scared so yeah. having those people around really helps and not many moms get the opportunity mm -hmm. because either your mom is in the village deep deep down or she passed on she's not around you don't have friends who are in that season so it's really tough so for me um that really helped yeah mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. daisy what has been your experience um i find that our mothers try to advise us but we are also empowered with the internet mm, so yeah. we're on google yeah. so your mom says sugar you're like mm. don't Putting my baby in uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but who don't put their babies in hub. Yeah. So I find that we are competing with the modern age and mm. the traditional yeah. the things that raised us. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a very interesting thing. There's this thing that I, I you know came to my mind earlier. I would like to engage your minds on it. Smartphones, smart moms. Yeah, you know? Smart. It's the era we're in. The mother gives birth to mm. a child and the next day they're handing the child a phone. A tab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
it, how are you managing that for yourselves? Uh, it's such a scary space to be in, but for us in our household, we've deliberately put systems in place to ensure that um, screen time is regulated. School days, we don't watch TV, and then maybe over the weekend, one hour or so, and it's been such a lifesaver because you know, screen is it's like digital cocaine. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets addictive and you find that kids have tantrums if they switch off the TV, they are shouting and wailing and watching all these programs that are just destabilizing their brain. They mm -hmm. can't concentrate mm -hmm. in class, in even sleep time is a problem because mm -hmm. of screen time. And that's something that we are doing intentionally and telling parents to allow children to be bored. Mm -hmm. You know, those days you'd be bored, you yeah. go outside, you play You dual. become creative out yeah, of bored. You play team mm -hmm. and you you, you know, kids are creative, like you can get the plants, look yeah, at but them. Yeah, now, Daisy, how do we allow kids to be creative when we lock them up in the house? In the apartment. <laughs> you don't allow them to visit people, yeah. neighbors, yeah. Uh, you at church, they're next to you, yeah. every supermarket, they're next to you. How yeah. do you expect them to be exploring mm. of their stages when yeah. we're doing this as parents? Yeah. I think as parents, we need to know that our, we need, we're raising our children for the world. And if they're next to you, when they're 18, they're not, they're not going to want to be next to you. Even when they're teenagers, they won't want to be next to you. So just allowing them, trusting that what you have done and the systems you have set up in your home have prepared your child for the world. Mm -hmm. And then doing things like books. We grew up reading books. We read Sweet Valley High, what, what. So have uh, books ar around the house, Play-Doh, coloring, mm -hmm. and just try to engage it. Buy a ball and mm -hmm. put it there. The children mm -hmm. will figure out that I can throw, I can kick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just do things that will get I your think kids. Daisy to. Daisy and I read the same Sweet <laughs> Valley High in, in high school. Yeah. In high school. <laughs> 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 a high school. Oh. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, in in you guys becoming mothers, mm. there's certain you know challenges you've faced, and but also there's certain things that you have learned over the course of time, mm. and. Uh, there's this thing called Mums Gather. Mm. How did you bust that, Lisa? Yeah. So. We, we, we all have three children, both have three children, so we got pregnant around the same time with our third, and we were going through it. I remember it was, I think, in the night, Daisy, you were talking, we even have videos where we are trying to shush our babies, and we're struggling, and because we have a community on Instagram, we had lots of moms that would come and ask us, how do I do this? You're asking questions, we're like, you know, let's set up a, a space where we can come together mm -hmm. and talk as moms, learn from one another because doing life alone as a mom is hectic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're talking in the night and we said, you know what, let's do it. Mm -hmm. and when, when was this? That was in 2022. 2022. In November, in November yeah. 2022. And it happened immediately? Yeah, so in like two weeks we're like, okay, let's do this, let's look for a venue, da 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 da, you know, it was scary, but yeah. we're like, let's help us and let's help moms. And how many mothers came for the first one? So about 60 moms, 60, 60 plus. 60 moms. Yeah. It shows you that there yeah. were 60 hungry mothers that were yeah. out there yeah. uh, desiring for a community such yeah. as that. And uh, you've had so far two editions yeah. of Moms Gather Daisy. Yeah. What have you seen come out of this Moms Gather that has been instrumental in changing mm. and helping mothers mm. navigate these new stages that they're in? We have created a community where we've been able to learn together as mothers because when you become a mother you're literally thrown in the deep end mm -hmm. it's a crash course you now have a baby figure out how to mm -hmm. parent this child until they can become an adult that can survive in society so for us to learn how to actually mother our children mm -hmm. well raise children that can survive in the world so we've been able to hear from mothers who have gone ahead of us they have teenagers so how do I prepare for the teenage age right now with toddlers how do I prepare for the adult age right now with my little children mm -hmm. so that we are empowered with that information we can do better we can't continue to do the things maybe our mothers did without improving on it and expect different results mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay well these ladies collectively are continuing with this mom gather mm -hmm. and you know mission and so the third mission is coming your way on the 11th mm -hmm. of May 2024 this mm -hmm. time round they have uh, purposely themed it to say walking in purpose as a mom mm -hmm. what is walking in purpose as a mom Lisa? Yeah, so, you know, when you think about being a mom, um, sometimes you're mothering the way you know how, the way your mom has taught you, what you saw, but we wanted to just understand what's the right way, so to speak, according to 
the assignment that God has given us as moms, what does mm -hmm. he want of us mm -hmm. when it comes to mothering, you know? What's that direction he wants us to take? So we have lots of conflicting priorities here and there, but when it comes to mothering, what's the better route to take? And how do we learn uh, in our careers, in our even being at home, mm -hmm. how do we do this mothering thing better? So just walking in that purpose is something that we are very, um, uh, excited about and we want moms to to do this thing um, mm -hmm. with a smile without mm -hmm. being frustrated mm -hmm. or if the frustrations come you know that this calling God has put on me mm -hmm. is is for the better and it's for the good mm -hmm. so that's why we decided on a theme like that all right yeah. so Daisy how is the 11th of May painted in your mind <laughs> <laughs> and the preparation yeah I think it's going to be a beautiful day because mm -hmm. the past two mom's gathers have been have, have taught us how to even do it better mm -hmm. one of our speakers is a mom who in the season when her children were young she decided to stay home and in that season of staying home she was able to birth a school it's one of the biggest international schools right now and so just for for moms to realize that motherhood is a season mm. so embrace the season and learn what you can from that season and you never know what will be birthed mm -hmm. from that season okay. so i believe that 11th may is going to be absolutely impactful for All every right. mother who so how is how is it designed what's the agenda of the day what's the program for the day who are the mm -hmm. speakers mm -hmm. uh, which particular group of mothers are you targeting mm -hmm. and uh, does it cost me <laughs> oh dollars <my> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not a lot of money. We're going to be at the beautiful Kampala Serena Hotel. It will cost you only 180000 which will come with meals, refreshments for the entire day. Our speakers, one of them is Flavia Tumsime Kabura. She is a mom of twins. Now longer, you've seen her transition in career. So we want to hear how has that transition been, motherhood and career. Our second speaker is Lona Magara. She is the owner of Vine International, mm -hmm. and she's also the chairperson of Makere University Committee. So she's going to tell us how was that season like raising her children. She now has adult children and mm -hmm. just give us tips on what she's seeing young mothers do now that she sees as things that maybe we need to change or do better. And our third speaker is Sarah Nsubuga who is a stay-at-home mother. She's thriving in that season. So for her to speak to people who have been called to stay at home in this season of motherhood, how can you thrive while you're working in that purpose as a mother? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. All right. Starting from what time to what time? It will start at 11 a.m and end at 6 p.m. Okay, yeah. all right. You know, women have this thing of theme. Mm. Dress code. Dress code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's yes. the dress code mm. theme? Yeah, the dress code is a pop of color. We just want you to be vibrant. Any color that makes you feel happy and nice, please mm -hmm. just come with that mm -hmm. and feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's very interesting. Mm. Uh, another element that I'd like to touch about is... Um, um, giving birth to children and they have complications mm. at early stage i know that you have had that experience mm. um, um how were you able to navigate and what are those elements on the things that helped you to navigate through that season yeah um for my for my third child um after four days they said uh, we realized that there was yellowing in the eye so we had jaundice and we had to go into the, the light room, what they mm. call it, yeah, you know, phototherapy. phototherapy. Mm -hmm. It was tough. And then a few weeks after um, she had bronchopneumonia, it was tough. We had to be admitted for five days in hospital. And let me tell you, no one prepares you for that time, yeah. you know. So financially, emotionally, I think having a supportive partner was really helpful. Um, but just trusting in God that mm. he's, a, he's a giver of this child. Mm. So he's going to, you know, support me on the journey. And... Mm. And just having people people from my cell came to visit, friends, you know, to encourage you and yes. just say it's going to be well. I think having that community mm -hmm. has really helped me um, along the journey. And when you talk about, you know, having children with uh, special needs or complication, um, even as moms gather the project we are doing this year, we decided how do we give back to the community in the first phase, mm -hmm. and then the event is just a cherry on top. Okay. So in the first phase, we are supporting Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association, um, where, you know, kids have water retention issues and spinal problems, and they cannot 
have the day-to-day -day normal life of children okay. as a child mm -hmm. and then even the mothers who are supporting those kids it's really tough and we are supporting them and we call upon everyone to come on board and support them as oh, well. Right. Uh, so to those who want to be a part of the project uh, or who also mm -hmm. want to sign up for the Moms Gather, yeah. how yeah. do they do that? Yeah. yeah. So just follow us on our social media on Instagram and you'll be able to get all those details. Daisy Sunshine on Instagram and Lisa Kusima mm -hmm. on Instagram. All the details are on there. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, you have no excuse. If this is the season in which you are a mother, then a community such as this is one that is highly recommended. Mm -hmm. The 11th of May, 2024, Kampala Serena Hotel will be your hosting venue from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Come and listen to mothers from all walks of life that have had the season of staying home and it's a normal thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not that you're giving up your life yeah. or you're going to die after that. No, no, no. Uh, also, it relates to something I experienced this morning. I was, as I was coming to work, I saw a school going children carrying a baby. I was confused. I mean, we do these stories here and we do them from people in remote areas. This is in an urban center and she's carrying a baby. I had to stop and talk to her and ask her, is that your baby? And she said, yes, and you're going to school your baby? It was a terrible, terrible um, interface that I had. So I am imagining, and I challenge these ladies, that while you're thinking of mothers, please think mothers from zero. Yeah to whatever age that they are in. We all need help. We all need her community. That brings us to the end of our conversation. But in our postscript this morning, we're going to be looking at frequency exposure and media coverage, especially in the business owners' concerns, measuring med media impact on business owners' dispute and the role of media in achieving sustainable society. Do stay with us.